The We Free Men, a book review by Christy Folsom. Terry Pratchett is often thought of first as a great fantasy writer, but it cannot be denied that he has a wit and humor that permeates all his books. I have concluded that Terry absolutely must have been a father because his stories read like one big, silly, punny, delicious eye roll of a dad joke. This is particularly evident in his first novel for young adults, The We Free Men. In the story, the protagonist is a young girl named Tiffany Aching, whose family has lived on the same farm raising sheep for many generations. As her father says, the Aching family has always been aching to stay, not aching to leave. But despite the Aching's farm having been as normal as can be for as long as can be, Tiffany is about to learn that not only is she a witch, but that a great and strange danger is coming their way. She sets off to stop it with the help of a talking toad, a frying pan, a band of rebellious six-inch tall men in kilts, and a mystic mentor named Miss Tick. Pratchett is very aware of the stereotypes and archetypes that make up the fantasy and fairy tale genres. Part of the humor in the book comes from how he plays with those expectations. In some ways, Tiffany is a typical hero, an innocent ingenue embarking on a journey. At times, she doesn't know what to do, is learning about herself and coming into her own. But even early in the novel, she's also able to defeat a headless horseman just by giving him a long judgmental stare in the eyes. Eyes that he doesn't have, by the way, because he's a headless horseman. Other characters follow this same pattern. The warriors of the novel are certainly fierce and noble fighters able to hold their own, but they are also only six inches tall. One of my favorite subversions is Tiffany's grandmother, the caregiver archetype. We might expect a caregiving grandmother to be kind, soft, attentive, and traditionally feminine. Granny aching is anything but. She smells of turpentine, clonks around in big old boots, and puffs on Jolly Sailor, a cheap and terrible pipe tobacco. Granny aching is practically the town patriarch, more like John Wayne than a traditional grandmother. Both Granny and Tiffany struggle to communicate their affection for each other, and when Granny dies before the main action of the novel begins, Tiffany is left without a caregiver, left with her own guilt and many unwanted questions about who her grandmother was. Yet throughout the novel, she relives so many special memories that make it clear that Granny was, and still is, a loving embodiment of the caregiver archetype, in just a bit more of a non-traditional wrapping. It's hard not to fall in love with the atypical characters of this silly, witty little novel. I very much enjoyed it, and I think anyone with a love of fantasy or humor would love it too. If you are a teen who grew up on Harry Potter or Lemony Snicket or Dave Pilkey, if you binged watch Stranger Things and lived for that moment where Susie very nearly caused the death of all the main characters by insisting on a duet of never-ending story, if you've ever watched the movie Labyrinth or heard tell of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, well, then you just might like the We Free Men. And the best part is, this is the first book in a five-part series on Tiffany Aching within an even larger fantasy world of 41 Terry Pratchett Discworld novels. So give it a try. This mission, should you choose to accept it, means you've got lots of reading, adventuring, chuckling, and eye-rolling ahead of you. The We Free Men was written by Terry Pratchett, and published in 2003 by Harper Collins in New York, New York. I read the 2015 revised paperback edition, which was 352 pages long, cost $11.99, and has the ISBN number 978-0062-435-262. Thank you, and have a great day.